January, Oklahoma will seventh national championship. This year, the Sooners are stocking number eight. So far, they've answered every question. Their winning streak stands at 20. Today, Eric Crouch welcomes OU to Nebraska's Field of Dreams. And the greeting committee here is known simply as the Black Shirts. Last year in Norman, Crouch and Nebraska opened a two touchdown lead on the Sooners, but a circus catch by Andre Wolfolk sparked the comeback and the Sooners rolled. Now for the 80th time, Oklahoma and Nebraska. Oh, what a day this is in Lincoln, Nebraska, folks. Dial B for perfect. I mean, we're talking 60 degrees. We're talking a renewal of a classic. It's Oklahoma and Nebraska. The BCS standings came out this week, and look who heads the list. OU and Nebraska. The Cornhuskers only three and a half points behind them. The BCS, of course, will determine which two teams will play in the Rose Bowl for the national championship. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. I guess everybody who's a college football fan's got a favorite Oklahoma-Nebraska game. Mine happened to be 30 years ago. I'm sure that Oklahoma fans have got a different one. But through the years, these two great schools have slugged it out. And what a rivalry it's been. You know, the two teams respect each other so much. That's one of the differences in this great rivalry. And this could be just the first of two meetings this year. Remember now, these two schools could well play for the Big 12 championship December 1st in Dallas. Time now for our national anthem. Let's go to the PA announcer. And now, please rise with the gentlemen removing their hats as Grammy Award-winning soprano and Opera Omaha star Sylvia McNair sings our national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the and prayers go out to the young men and women who are carrying the flag of the United States around the world today. The kickoff is coming up. Let's go now to New York and John Saunders and Terry Bowden. And entrances in college football. And the sea of red welcomes the Cornhuskers. Football. My partner Gary Danielson is here. And Gary, with two great defenses, but the quarterbacks are such a contrast. One experienced and one young. Yeah, and really the, the great part of college football, Brent, are these contrasts between senior quarterbacks, newly starting quarterbacks, different option offenses, pass offenses. This game is Eric Crouch's, I think, though. They're going to run the ball. He's a veteran at it. They've got the advantage at, at quarterback. But Oklahoma has a new quarterback, Jason White. We saw him against Texas. Came off the bench. But this is a different game. This is a game as a starter. He's had to deal with the media. He's had to deal with all the pressure all week. We will see. So what will determine it? Brent, you talked about the two great defenses. I think it's going to be the offhand of each quarterback. How well Crouch throws and how well White runs the ball. We've got some 
injury questions regarding Nebraska. Jack Aroot down on the field will have the very latest when we come back. Memorial Stadium, I just talked to, talk to Coach Frank Solich to update a couple of key injury reports. Tight end Tracy Wistrom, who's been suffering from a knee problem, will get the nod to start. But more importantly, Solich has decided to go with his injured fullback, Judd Davies, to get the nod to start. Davies suffering, Brent, from a high ankle sprain. All right, Jack, thank you very much. Oklahoma won the toss, and they have deferred. So Nebraska will take the ball to start the game. And Tim Duncan, the senior from Clinton, Oklahoma, put the ball on the tee, and Josh Davis. And we ask Eric Crouch what he wants to establish in the early going against Oklahoma's great defense. The biggest thing is, is just recognizing uh, their different defensive formations if they're going to come up in the line and blitz. I know you're always looking for what they did last year. Uh, after watching the tape, they were successful in a lot of ways from what they did. So uh, you're, it'll be interesting to see what they do. So number seven wears it in honor of John Elway, who he worshipped as a youngster growing up in Omaha. Under center with the power line look. And a late pass. And Diedrich gets the game's first carol as we take a look at the backs and receivers for Nebraska. The injuries Jack told you about. Judd Davies with an ankle. John Gibson with an ankle. He's playing. And Tracy Wistrom with the knee. We'll see how that will Fullback is Judd Davies, and what a difference he could make. Sophomore from Omaha. Second down and four after the six yard run by Darren Diedrich on first down. Now Crouch runs the action the other way. Diedrich on a high pitch, didn't have a chance, and guess who made that hit? Roy Williams, number 38, makes his first whack. So here they are, folks, the 18 wheelers. That's a key to whatever success Nebraska will or will not enjoy here today, believe me. And Tommy Harris, number 97, he looks to take Judd Davies or whoever plays fullback away from Nebraska. And I see Wistrom already yep. going off on the far side. So Wistrom's out of the game. Now it is third down and seven after the loss. From the shotgun, Diedrich can't handle it. It's three and out. And there's that OU defense again. So the OU secondary and Roy Williams already has made his first big play in this game. Folks, he's got to be the leader for the Jim Thorpe, given every year to the best defensive back in college football. What a whale of a player he is. And now Kyle Larson trots onto the field to punt. And Curtis Fagan. Return number 19's punt, and Oklahoma could have excellent starting field position, something that they have had all season long. They come through on Larson. Oh, they were close in the middle. Here's Fagan. Craver yanks him down. A great tackle at the 38 yard line. Now, the young man and Jack Aroot went down to Norman and asked him what he would try to do in the first series. Uh, the first series, you know, we want to be, uh, we want to be tough. We, you know, we want to drive down the field and score. You know, show them, show them that we, you know, we can move the ball on them all the time. Well, here comes the young man. People who talk about who's going to win this game said there was a big edge for Nebraska quarterback. We'll see. Jason White, Lincoln, Nebraska, with the crowd howling, with that spread formation. He'll throw it on first down, and it's intercepted by Kramer. Kramer's got it. To the 25. The first turnover. Oklahoma comes out doing what they do best. They're in the shotgun the whole game. Good for 
protection for White. Steps up and throw it, but when you have great coverage, and that was great coverage by Craver, the ball was slightly behind the, play, the receiver that time, but Craver, that's as good as you can cover a guy. Jason White thought his receiver would be Craver. He did not win that battle of one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Craver makes the game's first big play. So Keo Craver, the outstanding DB, and a first down with Freewald and Castle in that backfield. And Crouch was hit right on the handoff by Jimmy Wilkerson, the defensive end who also is a stand-up rush man and makes a lot of tackles for a loss for this well-coached OU defense. Brent, I think that's the most underrated part of this Oklahoma football team is their athleticism on their front four. Wilkerson, the, the budding superstar Tommy Harris, are two great football players that kind of get lost in the shuffle with all the big names out there. Look, yeah, Gary, they didn't have any time to even get anything no. going that time. Penetration on the option. Crouch back in the gun, and he'll keep it himself, but there's no crease. He was sealed up at the 30-yard line. They are not giving him any daylight. That was Brandon Moore. Now, Brandon Moore is the only member of the OU team who was here when they were embarrassed 69 to 7 I believe the the Brent, score was Brent great matchup here Fonati on the true freshman watch from freshman Harris spin out of this block that is a tremendous young football player on the best offensive lineman for Nebraska so here's your third and long and the Huskers have been unable to move the ball on this defense slant pass high dropped so it's fourth down and will Solich try a long field goal here as Derek Strait the defensive back I think made knocked, the play for the Sooners. I think he knocked it down. I, I think he snapped that right out of the receiver's hand that time. Two great plays, two tremendous defenses with playmakers all over the field. Derek Strait kind of matches Keel Craver's play and snaps this ball right out of the receiver's hand. Watch the slant coming across. The ball is caught and snapped away from the receiver. Beautiful play. You can't do it any better than that by Strait. Playmakers, playmakers, playmakers. I guess that's Joint how you field win. position here. They're going to punt. Kyle Larson. And, and so Oklahoma Solich putting. electing to play field position against the young quarterback who's already thrown one interception. They're trying to down it inside the 10, and they've done it. So a battle of field position unfolding in Lincoln. Timeout. Oklahoma's football. How good is the OU defense? They've had six plays for Nebraska, minus one yard in the early going. Ronaldo works. You would think now that OU would try to settle into a little bit of a running game and confusion by the young quarterback on the handoff. And you can see that Ronaldo works was also with Quentin Griffin. And here are his targets today. Smith is tight end's been his go to guy. We talked about Quentin Griffin. Outside, we got Mark Clayton out there. Fagan has already returned a punt. Josh Norman and Antoine Savage, the big guy. So he has the weapons, but so far, he's been unable to use any of them. And now it is second and long. And all we've got to say is there are jitters here for sophomore Jason White in the early going. We'll try to settle down now from the end zone, high and incomplete. Gary, right, your thoughts about the young quarterback as we take a look now. The offensive line, Frank Romero, the All-American, hasn't given up a sack again this year. But Jared Fields is a freshman over there at right tackle, and he's got to take on Chris Kelsey in one of the key matchups in this game. Here's your backers, and they're looking for Quentin Griffin when they go to that running game. But it'll be Kelsey who will attempt to tee it off here against Fields on third and long. Great protection. High percentage completion. A few yards close to the first down. Very nice move before John Clanton, the nose man, was able to get back defensively, Gary. And uh, OU will, will punt. And the secondary for Nebraska 
They'll be busy. They'll be under pressure. And two of the four of the six guys that will play back there all day. They'll go up to a dime. Good job. You mentioned it, Brent. Stunt by Nebraska on that third down play, and they handled that stunt, stunt that Baylor gave Oklahoma such big problems with. So Jeff Ferguson, one of the best punters in the country, and Gross waits to return it. Got a big bounce. Fielded at the 36. Look for a crease. And he is brought down at the 41. Another part of the Stoops formula. Special teams, special teams. No score. It's Oklahoma, Nebraska. Timeout. Stoops won a national championship in his second year. Frank Solich. And folks, this is one of those games that will define his tenure at Nebraska. He's got a great shot with all the home games this year, but he's got to win big games like this one on his home turf. Here's Diedrich straight ahead. Tommy Lehman, number 11, met him right there in the hole. And here are Pontiac Game Solutions, Gary. Well, two evenly matched teams. What's going to happen, I think, is some big plays are going to determine it. It might be a penalty on a touchdown, a big turnover. It might be a punt inside the two-yard line that Oklahoma did against Texas. Both teams want to win first down. That means 50%, four yards or more, and both teams have to affect the quarterback, hit the quarterback all game. Let me correct myself. I knew I was going to do it someday. It's Teddy Lehman and not Tommy. Dietrich up across the... Dropped the ball. Oh, fun ball. Call him down. Call him down. And it was punched out by Roy Williams again, making another big play. Let's check in now with John Saunders. Brian here in the Burger King. Hi, right, John, and here Eric Crouch from the gun threw high that time. He had Thomas open, and he misfired. And again, Nebraska's forced to punt. Eric Crouch and the offense unable to move against the Oklahoma defense. That's one of your headlines of this game. We've got two, folks. That would be number one. The second one is the fact that young quarterback Jason White has been very shaky here in the early going. So whichever offense can solve its problem quicker is going to have a huge upper hand in this game. I don't think either coach is unhappy putting the ball early in this game. We may have a lot of these today. Larson's punt. And uh, I thought it might have been touched, but it wasn't as Fagan picked it up. I think it was, but that's why won. Fagan did it, just in case it hit his own player. That was a heads-up play by Fagan. <laughs> Gary, what eights, can he do? Uh, the eight sacks last week has definitely had a factor on his psyche and the play calling for Oklahoma. High and incomplete, and that was great coverage by McPherson. McPherson on Trent Smith, the big tight end. That has been the biggest change since Jason White has come in the football game for Oklahoma at the quarterback. Trent Smith, the last two games, has caught 18 passes as the tight end has become more of a weapon for this Oklahoma football team. Nebraska is not peeling with Quinton Griffin. Everyone I've seen prior to this has tried to take Griffin out of the game. It looks to me like Oklahoma can get the ball to their tailback. The Nebraska defensive backs are pressing the wide receivers. And the option look. And Quinton Griffin explodes to the 40-yard line on a nice run, the best run from scrimmage we've had by either team. 18 this, yards for Griffin. Yes, this is what I think is available for Oklahoma. Quinton Griffin is not being taken out of the game. We have seen in past games, Texas sometimes run two men with Griffin, forcing the quarterback to throw the ball down the field. I'm sure Mark Mangino, offensive coordinator, and Chuck Long will recognize that and take advantage of that man right there. Play like that will help settle Jason down. Looking for the completion, throwing high to Griffin. Craver, the defender over there on him. So just underway, the battle between the top two teams and the BCS standings. A sea of red here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And on OU's first offensive play, Keo Craver. Of Nebraska picked it off, but the Huskers unable to move on OU's great defense. And we do mean great, folks. I have not seen many ever that are any better than this Oklahoma defense. Second down and 10 for the offense. Here's the blitz. Successful. Sacked at the 35 yard line. 
He was sworn. Shanley, Clanton, both up were there. This was the three-man line that uh, Nebraska does not use a lot of this, but it was an overloaded blitz. Guys coming from the outside, not enough people to pick up for Oklahoma on this. You see the stunt, two free men. Jason White did not read it. All he could do was move up in the pocket. Both teams are not controlling first down. It's having a big effect on the game. This third and 15, it'll be tough. Incomplete. Well, great coverage. Oklahoma forced to punt. That's Craver again. And Keo Craver has been the MVP on defense for Nebraska so far. You're going to see the crossing route coming right down here. The ball by Jason White was thrown slightly behind the receiver. I think he had him open right here. If he leads him into this area, he was a little bit behind on the throw. That's what allowed Craver to get there and make the play. If he leads that receiver across the field, he has an easy completion. So the battle of the putters continues. Ferguson. And close with a dangerous catch. Made the most of it. Wow. That has and to there's be a, a penalty halo. flag That down. has to be a halo. That has to be. He was closer than six feet on that play, even though he tried to avoid it. Both teams seem to be able to handle what the other team does best, the option and the pass game. We will see how Solich and Mangino adjust to try to give them a different look. Halo violation on the kicking team will be declined. They'll take forward progress. First down. Well, a reminder, Monday night, AFC Central showdown. We've got, let's see, we've got Javon Kurse. And Tennessee taking on the amazing Pittsburgh Steelers. Who would have thought the Steelers would be a possible Super Bowl contender this year? Doing a good job. First down and 10. And it's Eric Crouch's turn again. Probing the middle with Paul Castle. One of their backup. Uh, fullbacks, Jimmy Wilkerson making the stop. Big, big point right there. Nebraska's two first fullbacks, Davis and Crewalt, not in the game, and they hand it off to Paul Castle, a walk on fullback. Big drop off between Davis and Castle. Thunder Collins checks into the backfield. Rocky Kalmus, number 20, points that out to his fellow linebackers. Kalmus goes into the hole to help out. And uh, Eric Crouch is very mindful of number 20, Rocky Kalmus. He's going to be obviously uh, uh, mirroring me quite a bit, maybe trying to find out where I'm going. And it's going to be tough because we're going to have a lot of different formations for him to look at. And, uh, you know, that's the tough part about being a linebacker is uh, reading the fullback and the quarterback and the eye back. That's something they have to do all the time. And it is crazy. does a great job. Did the job that time, but now it's third and one. Nebraska looking for its first, first town of this game, and Thunder Collins gives it to him. Dove across, and there's the Huskers' initial first down against this defense. Boy, Jerry, it's tough getting yards. First downs are tough to come by, aren't they? I mean, this is the way football was meant to be played. Great athletes on defense. Every yard so valuable. The punting game, a big factor. Everything involved. A lot of pressure on every snap. So Rocky Kalmus now looking in on Crouch on this first and 10. Crouch on the keeper, and he's hit at the 44, and Kalmus talked about defending him. Stopping Crouch. I mean, want to get it out of his hand uh, and get it in someone else's hand so uh, really stop him and make him one dimensional and make him have to use his arm to beat us. You know this defense has been so good Crouch hasn't even had time to get it out of his hands a couple of times. That's how quickly they've hit him second down and 13 speed all across the defense from the shotgun. There's the point to Thomas straight the defensive back. Well short of the first down as they cross midfield, and that'll bring up third down. And one thing that Eric Crouch might have to do is throw the ball here to loosen things up. Let's check it with John Saunders. John, here it's third and six. We're scoreless. There's the swing pass to Thunder Collins, trapped, and 
Nebraska forced a punt. They read that play perfectly. Corey Klein, the sophomore from Tulsa, the big defensive tackle. How about Roy Williams, though? He reads things so quickly, also turned it back in, and all, uh, 10 of the 11 players for Oklahoma were outside the hash pursuing that quick throw by Nebraska. So our punting battle continues. I'll tell you, you don't win on first down, you're punting in this game. Defenses are too good. Fagan gonna let it bounce. And it'll roll down just inside the 15 yard line. 424 in the opening quarter, no score. Courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, Goodyear providing area of coverage of the world's sporting events for more than 75 years. A look down on our sea of red here on this gorgeous Saturday afternoon for football. Young Jason White back in the shotgun for Oklahoma, scoreless, trying to go downfield, had an open man, and he overthrew Josh Norman. Had him open, Gary. Had him open, but he got hit as he let it go. Big thing for Nebraska. They've got to keep hitting the Oklahoma quarterback, whether he's sacking him, that's great. But after he lets the go, you will have a cumulative effect on a quarterback. Believe me, I know. That's part of the game plan. A second and ten and with this spread and a host of receivers. And two freshman offensive linemen on that Oklahoma offensive line, too. The DBs press. They leave a safety back. Checking here's off. Jason checking off. Second down with a clock running down on him. Got it off. Fired complete using that safety valve. And you know, we talked to Keo Craver about these Oklahoma receivers. A big key of this game is going to be the, the, the defensive backs play. And uh, we know that uh, we have our hands full with all of the receivers that they have. But we also know that we are aggressive defense and we got some great cornerbacks and great safeties. And we got the personnel to match up with their receivers. And so Kramer with already one interception today. Smith with his first catch now for seven yards. Emerging story for Oklahoma too. Jamel Brown, number 55, is in at right tackle. Another change at tackle for Oklahoma. Having a lot of trouble. They can't hold up out there. High. And again, they simply outnumbered the right tackle that time. It wasn't his fault. They put three on one, and pressure right. was all over with Mark Federal in on top of him. Two guys coming. Receiver beats him inside, but look at the throw. It's behind. You get two people on that outside tackle, and then you take the guard with the slanting defensive end, and that forced White to throw that ball behind the receiver. Jason White has not been accurate in the game so far. This is the kind of game that Nebraska wanted, to be perfectly honest. I'm sure they're concerned about their offense's lack of production. But Frank Solich wanted a field position game and keep pressure on the Oklahoma offense. He does not mind how this is unfolding here. Let's take a look at what these two teams like to do, their priorities, what they want to run. Oklahoma basically just two styles of offense. They do it very well. Finesse plays from the shotgun and, of course, passing the ball. Nebraska has everything. Power game, the option game, play action off of it. Their finesse screens from that, and then the last thing they like to do is pocket pass. Both teams take advantage of what they do very well. No one has advantage here. Now, Nebraska on its own 42, and Oklahoma back on the 21. Huge advantage for the Huskers. They've been unable to cash in on it. They'll try to throw. Open man, Thunder Collins. Out of bounds, inside the 40-yard line as he pulled it in. Boy, he was really a tightrope walker down that sideline, wasn't he, folks? I wasn't sure he was in bounds over there. Took Tracy Wistrom and put him down the field right here, and then Thunder Collins goes out to the outside. Wistrom takes the safety, and there's Collins, who's a better receiver than Diedrich. Diedrich has only caught one pass. Oh, it's close. Yes, it was. One oh, pass boy. this year. <laughs> and there's Diedrich, and Elvis up over the top, number 20, who averages about 10 tackles a game coming in to make the stop. Roy Williams was also there. Doubleheader Saturday here on ABC. Great games coming up next. Michigan, Iowa.
of a Maryland and Florida State. How about the Terps being unbeaten under the fringe? Now fringe going in there. And then UCLA, you would think that UCLA might have a chance to jump to number two this week in the BCS. We'll see how it all unfolds here. Second down. And the third down. Nothing in the middle. Kalmus and friends were all over that middle. Steve Prewall got a chance. And let's talk about young Harris. We haven't talked about Tommy Harris, number 97, that freshman defensive tackle. Gary, you said he's been amazing. So he really far. has, and he's reading the plays very quickly. He's forcing a double team nearly every play, getting penetration on the option plays, and that's why it's so tough to run the ball between the tackles. That guy right there. Interesting that on third and eight, and they take him out and go to a three-man line. They're expecting Nebraska to throw. They blitz a safety, and it's blocked as Roy Williams comes in. Oh, what a play by Williams. And Another vaulted. big play, Williams. He vaulted the blocker again last that time. You would think the scouting report for Nebraska. Do not go low for Roy Williams. He comes in right there. Watch the back go down low for his feet, and Williams just leaps it. Come on, running back. Stay up tall. You never want to go low. There's Williams right there. You never want to go low on a blitzing linebacker. That is so easy for those guys just to fall. But again, Nebraska figures to keep Oklahoma and the young quarterback sealed up. Larson, four catch by Fagan at the 15-yard uh, line. Well, tomorrow the USA's Michelle Kwan, Sarah Hughes, and Sasha Cohen at the field at Smart Ones, Skate America, 1 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific, right here on ABC. Well, Brent, Frank Solich was the running back coach here for Nebraska for 14 years. I'm sure he got a hold of Darren Diedrich that time and say, stay up on the blitzes, son. We just can't have that. That's how Texas learned a valuable lesson on that play. Remember that scene down yes. in Dallas? Yes. Williams flying in over the... Blocker. Big story with Jamal Brown, number 55, a backup guard having to play offensive tackle. Before the snap. You know, we were talking about that play, and, and what's interesting, and I know you folks down in Oklahoma have read it and chuckled about it. They told Roy Williams, he said, look, the one thing we don't want you to do is leave your feet. So what does he do? Take off his cape and come flying at Chris Simmons. And then Teddy Lehman, number 11, just walks on in for the touchdown. One of the memorable plays and uh, Tom pieces Lehman of tape of the, of the season. Yeah, Tom Lehman could have scored on that one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 214 here. Still scoreless, Gary. A lot of strategy unfolding on both sides. The interception turned the field position game around for Nebraska. Let's see if Oklahoma survives this first quarter. Deeper hole now for White. They bring a receiver around, and they finally get the ball in the run of their wide man's hands. Antoine Savage, who probably is as dangerous as any of their wide receivers, and they just Bring him around the corner for a uh, for a 21-yard gain that time. Savage, Norman, Wolfolk going both ways. Mark Clayton, the emergence of the freshman. Trent Smith, Quinton Griffin. Looks like they only do two things: finesse football or pocket passing. But boy, there's so many different weapons out there for the quarterback to use. Well, we used two big plays have been runs. Yep. Quinton Griffin and. And now Savage on the end of round. First and ten. They'll try Griffin again. And he slips through and then dives for a couple more yards. Kelsey makes the stop. And so maybe OU's just going to stay on the ground here for a while. They've had their most success of this game so far. Go figure. OU has outrushed Nebraska 40 to 15, and Nebraska's out past OU 25 <laughs> to 16. Well, I thought it would be the offhand of both quarterbacks, but I didn't think it would develop this quickly in the game. That's usually what great defenses do force you to do something you don't want to do, and these are two great defenses. Second down for Oklahoma. Here comes the blitz. Got it off in time, short of the first down because of Craver. Who made a fine play on Savage. Well, Nebraska's trademark on defense is not zone defense. They run 
about four corners. There you see the matchup right there, one on one. Craver, little crossing, little picking action from Trent Smith. He actually had Trent Smith, the tight end, on an easier throw right there. And that's been the emerging receiver here on third and short. Look for him to run. And White tries to buck ahead. Nebraska tries to hold the middle that time. And uh, well, I don't know. the spot will determine this, folks. It's going to be close. I don't think so. Yeah. A dreaded fist sign when you're yeah, a quarterback. Yeah, you see that fist, man. <laughs> oh, you hate to see that. So Ferguson trots onto the field. However, let's point out that a couple of plays helped them in this field position battle. They're going to seal Nebraska back up now. Ferguson will try to get him back down inside the 20. And he has not had a good punt in this game yet. Let's see if he can get one up. He's such a fine punter. to Gross, who didn't signal for a fair catch and gets ripped down inside the 13. What a Folks, Jeff Ferguson is a wonder back there as a punter. Watch this. He did it in the Air Force game. He did it in the National Championship game when he took a safety right there. He saves maybe 75 yards in field position. What a play by Ferguson. I'll tell you, you don't have to have a good average when you make plays like that. I'm going to tell you, folks, Ryan Daniel, a backup tight end for Oklahoma, may have saved the day. When we take another look at that, you'll see the block. And he gave Ferguson enough time to capture the football and get it off. The next time you see it, watch 82 throw a block on that play. Couch battles his way to the 20. And now take a look, folks, at 82. He's got to hold the fort on that side. There's the snap. Look at him go to work. No penetration, and Ferguson's able to get it off. Well done by Daniel. And we come to the end of the quarter. We're scoreless, and ABC Sports presentation returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. They're one of the favorites, but it's not going to be a runaway, and you would think that he needs a good performance today. That Nebraska is going to have to win this game for Crouch to become the favorite in that high. We got a whistle before the snap. Deshaun Foster at UCLA, Ken Dorsey at Miami, and perhaps Rex Grossman at Florida would be your four leading candidates, according to all the fellows who've got votes and all the articles I've read this week. But when you lose a game like Grossman did, it really hurts your Heisman Trophy chances. You know, I've got to wonder out loud here: When's the last time in Lincoln? Nebraska's running game was held to 20 yards in a quarter. Folks, I, I've never been here when they've been held to 20 yards rushing. I got to tell you that right now. That's how good this Oklahoma defense is. I'm, man, this is a great defense. Suck it down at 10. Crouch. Under fire, gets it off to Thomas for about six yards. Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. I told you my favorite OU Nebraska game 30 years ago, the game of the century. Folks, who were the head coaches that day, the offensive coordinators that day, and the ABC announcers? Game of the century 30 years ago. Come on now. You Sooner fans, your you Husker out, fans. Right? Get your oh, laptop some out. of these guys are all over <laughs> it right now. We'll have the answer for you later. And I know Jagger Root's got an interesting piece of footage from that game. Man, that was a great football game. They played that one around Thanksgiving time. I still remember the cover of Sports Illustrated. Probably got around someplace. Crouch goes back, got time, going deep to Thomas. Thomas in a battle, and it falls incomplete because Brandon Everidge, number seven, was right there. Brandon Everidge, such a factor in the run game. The question was, could he stay disciplined in the play action pass game. This time Thomas who lined up in the slot on the play action game goes down. But what a nice job Everidge does of looking back not panicking not just grabbing the receiver finding the ball and making the deflection. Another athletic play by a defensive secondary. Let's see how OU handles this punt. Takes a Nebraska bounce and faking on a high hop. Rip down. Gross. He returned the favor. Remember when he got ripped down? Well, that time he was the gunner on the cover. 
ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by years of the Stoops era in Oklahoma. The quarterbacks have been completing 63% of their passes. White is 3 for 10 today. Yeah, 30% won't do it, will it, Gary? No. Yeah. First down for White. A little inside handoff. And Griffin breaks free. 35. A busted pass. The linebacking core. And uh, Gross along with Booker, but it's a 16-yard gain. That's three carries for 40 yards. Hey, Jack Aroon, how's it sound down on the field, my friend? Well, Brent, let me tell you, the crowd noise is almost deafening down here. And in fact, it has created somewhat of a problem for this young offensive line for OU. Mark Mangino went over some of the hand signals, and now they're going to go from center and guard out to the tackles and then to the wideouts with hand signals. And you can see that they're trying to communicate down there right now, just what Jack was telling you yeah, about. Yeah, that's one of the reasons Howard Duncan was moved to guard right there. They're going to stay on the ground, but nothing much doing as the black shirts hold. Schlechter making the stop. Howard Duncan, the senior, started the year at offensive tackle. Because a new center, Vince Gimson, is a true freshman at center, the change was made to Duncan at guard to help a little bit with that communication, Brent. Second down and eight. The nose man is taken out again. That means it's a three-man defensive line. This is what Texas had success with against OU on several occasions. And Pryor through the snap. Did the uh, clock expire on the young quarterback? No, they got a little bit of movement by the offensive guard that time. Yeah. Mike Skinner. Exactly what they got. Back to the snap. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. It is tough coming into Lincoln. Yes, it is. With a young quarterback. And here we see Howard Duncan, that left guard Gary was telling you about. He'll help out in the communication. Making you see all he's the calls. identifying people. Carter doesn't have that much experience yet. The center. In the middle. Time. Got Smith again. First down. Beautiful. He already is tight end coming across. Led him perfectly that time. Nice throw by Jason White. For 15 yards. Love that matchup. Big athletic tight end on a smallish corner. Even though those corners are used to covering those wide receivers out there on, uh, with a lot of space, the tight end can pressure up, can handle a linebacker, whatever. The movement, the increase passing to the tight end, I think has been a big difference in this sooner offense. All right, Oklahoma playing with half a field right now. Fresh set of downs, and they're at midfield. Quarterback draw. A first down. He hit the marker beautifully with Burrow in pursuit. Craig, Craig Bull, defensive coordinator, did not want to go to an all-out blitzing game, a la Texas, a la Kansas State. I think he will soon think that we need to come after this guy. Setting back and allowing Oklahoma to run their finesse plays, the draw, the quarterback draw, those little shovel passes. That plays right into the Oklahoma game plan. Mark Mangino is calling a real good game. With Chuck Long up in the booth. There's the big fellow over there. And he's got the Sooners on the move. Here's Griffin. He's stacked up that time. Mangino knows that he doesn't want the youngster whipping it in the air 35, 36 times. He doesn't have Josh Hypo back there. He wants to go ahead and make sure that they respect the run. Well, the substitution package is in now. Chris Tony gives him an extra fullback in that backfield. Second down and 10. They want to make sure that Jason has enough time. They surround him with a couple of running backs. Nebraska has their three-man look in. They've been blitzing off this. There's two blockers back there. They're going to send him out. They release him. Here's White looking for an open man. He may take off. He'll drop it to the open man. Griffin out of a beautiful by Jason White. He made them think he was going to take off. And then he, he dropped hit. it to the open running back. And, he and got Quentin hit. Griffin goes 16 yards. And White is down on the sideline after making the play. And that will probably mean that Nate Hibble will come in for a Absolutely. play. Absolutely. Here he comes. Eight is up. There he is, ready to go. 
Nate Hibble took that pounding in the Kansas State game and then came back with the Texas game. But as ja Jason White came out of the pocket, Nebraska had dropped into a zone and he kind of suckered those linebackers up and let go right at the last second, dropping this pass off. But after he let it go, about a step, I don't know if he pulled a muscle or what. Yes, he oh, did. Yeah, Looked he like he pulled a all. muscle. Yes, absolutely. I thought maybe he got hit. I don't over know if he twisted side. his ankle or knee. Yes, it looked like he twisted his knee after he let go of the ball that time, and his left knee gave way. Oh, what a shame! Jack will check in on that because it was just a, a marvelous moment yes, for the youngster because he had the defense thinking he was going to take off. They have to respect his running ability. And he threw it to Quentin Griffin, who was wide open on this play. Yeah, watch how much time Jason White, only a three-man rush. Jason White comes up and buys time by just forcing the run, and then Quentin Griffin just kind of drops out behind the linebackers, and what I thought maybe he got hit after he let the ball go, and you can see Griffin had his right foot in. That was a legal catch. So Nate Hibble, who lost his job a couple of games ago, remember he transferred. To Oklahoma from Georgia. Outstanding young golfer. And now he'll step back in and he will take over. And uh, Hibble himself has taken a severe pounding. Remember this against K State? I mean, it was relentless as the Wildcats sold out. Then Texas came after him. They got up in his shoulder area. And now it's Nate Hibble's game, at least for the uh, time being. He's taking some practice snaps as White is already being helped back to the locker room. And uh, so we'll take a break here in Lincoln. So here's Hibble's first play. Fakes the end around. Pulls back and a toss to the end zone. Tight end. Incomplete and there'll be a penalty. They'll take interference. That was going to be a touchdown that time. McPherson felt he had no other choice but to take the interference. Remember, it won't be first and goal, but it will certainly be an automatic first down. It was a nice play by Hibble yeah, as they faked the call? end around. And uh, there's a great opening call by Mangino because Nebraska not looking for that. Absolutely not. Trent Smith down there. McPherson did the smart thing that time, just saving the play, but coming out of the box. Pass interference! Defense, 15 yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. Kibble just getting rid of that ball. He had Trent Smith wide open. Smith had to stop for the ball, but McPherson says, uh uh, if you're going to get a touchdown, you can't get a cheap one. You got to run it in from the seven yard line. And you think that Oklahoma won't try, eh? Here they come from the seven with Quentin Griffin. Remember, this fellow's got a nose for the end zone. He's right off to the right. Nebraska better be aware of him. Show a little motion. And here comes 22. Stopped. McPherson, guilty of interference, makes the tackle. A defensive battle in Lincoln, Nebraska, between the top two teams in the BCS poll. Oklahoma won. Nebraska two and this could be the first of two meetings this year and both these teams could wind up at Dallas playing for the Big 12 championship on December 1st starting quarterback Jason White injury to his left knee ice being applied and by the looks of it he won't be back for a while so Nate Hibble who lost his job to White has taken over second down and goal going to throw for it tight end wraps it up touchdown OU so off the bench, Nate Hibble drives the Sooners to their first touchdown of the game. And Trent Smith, the junior from Clinton, Oklahoma, the big tight end, has been a factor in this game. It's his third catch. Coming the guy, isn't he? Nebraska had it defended right there, but Hibble does a nice job of dropping this ball over the linebacker. Nice touch on the play. Throw it to your big guy. And Trent Smith has really emerged. We did that Kansas State game, right, Brent? I was begging him to throw to Trent Smith. Maybe they saw the tape of it afterwards. Tim Duncan adds the extra point. Oklahoma strikes first. And given how their defense is playing, that could be enough. But here he is. Also, he's a pilot. Look at him pilot that touchdown. Nice landing, too, Trent. Timeout. 
Let your heart go out to Jason yes. White. Here he is. He, he just earns the starting job. Now he's suffered a knee injury. Helmet off on the sideline. Ice being applied to it. Hibble comes back in, and guess what? Oklahoma scores a few plays later. All right, here's a kickoff to Josh Davis out to the 20-yard line. Folks, how good is this Oklahoma defense? I want you to take a look at this Nissan drive summary. Nebraska can't do anything. They punted six times here in this game. 52 total yards. And on their longest drive, 20 yards, 18 of it came in one pass on, on a play on a first down play. Man, it has been total stop. I think Nebraska is hurting without their two top fullbacks. I think it has changed their game, and Tracy Wistrom is a shadow of himself right here. He is basically a decoy. As a kind of ball yet today. Here's the toss to Diedrich. He won't get anything against that defense. They just gang up on him. Dvorak is right there. Jack Aru, what about the injuries? Well, Brent, as a policy, Oklahoma does not release information during the game about injuries, but it's fairly evident that you won't see Jason White back at quarterback. They have examined his left knee, have iced it down considerably. And one thing to remember, Brent, when the, in the Oklahoma sidelines, what they do during practice, the starting quarterback gets 70% of the snaps. I'll update you as well on Wistrom. He's just a little lame like he was before. All right, Jack, thank you. His crouch. This time he gets the ball into Thomas's hands. Thomas is the leading receiver. That's a first down. He becomes the go-to guy, the basketball player, with three catches for 27 yards. So Thomas now is Crouch's number one target. And if they're going to climb back in, they'll have to be the guy, it looks like. Yeah, you know, of the 70 passes that Nebraska has completed coming into this game, 52 of them have gone to Thomas, Wistrom, or Gibson. They really only throw the ball to three different people, and one of those guys is Nick. They bring Thunder around, and Crouch pulls out to pass it again, wide open. Cross midfield, puts it in the hands of Troy Hassebrock, the wingback from right here in Lincoln. That's 19 yards. Hasbrook's going to come right across there. He's almost lined up in a tight end position. Play action pass. You see Crouch on the right. Go down the option. Come back. Hard to get these play action passes going from the option when you're not running the option well. Oklahoma isn't buying anything but the option game. They want to put hits on Crouch. Same formation again. So it's first down. And here's Crouch. There is the pitch to Thunder. And he thunders to the turf because of Derek Strait. All right, let's go back now on the Aflac trivia question. We ask you the game of the century. Who are the head coaches, offensive coordinators, and ABC announcers? All right, there you are. Chuck Fairbanks <laughs> and Bob Devaney with the head. How about the offensive coordinators? Barry Switzer and Tom Osborne. And the announcers, of course, Chris Schenkel and Bud Wilkinson. Well, had that call for ABC. There you are, the legendary Oklahoma coach there on the left, Bud Wilkinson, and of course. Chris Schenkel, play-by-play -play guy, is probably watching today, Chris. Everybody wants to say hello. He's back. Fires for nine yards over to the uh, right sideline. Derek straight again over there. Eric Crouch is very underrated as a thrower. I think if he would have came into college football running an offense with that spread attack that maybe like the last score at Clemson, excuse me, Northwestern or Clemson uses where he had to throw the ball, I think you'd see Eric Crouch throw for a lot of yards. This by far the most impressive Nebraska drive of the day. Diedrich for the first down. So this time, the Nebraska coaches use the pass to loosen things up. Then they come back for the run. The crowd back into it now, enthusiastic. They trail it by seven. But for the first time today, the Cornhuskers are sustaining a drive. Can they finish, however? And they've done it with the pass. They've loosened up this Oklahoma defense. I don't know if Frank Solich in Nebraska believes they can run their base offense against this great Oklahoma rush defense. To the snap. Flag comes flying. I, I wonder if they're going to get an illegal substitution. They had 12 men in the huddle. And illegal broke substitution. Yeah. Offense broke the huddle with more than 11 players. Five yard penalty. If you come inside the numbers and don't leave in an orderly fashion and put 12 in the huddle, you're going to get called. 
There's the penalty situation in the game. Stoops will take it. Pushing back another five. Make it first and 15. And they'll challenge this Nebraska passing game again. Thomas is out to the right. Remember now, he's been the go to guy. Play fake. Crouch keeps it. But guess who's there? Derek Strait. We check in with John Sun. All right, John, thank you. Well, that last completion was for Ringelberg of Nebraska. Kyle Ringelberg, number 86, has been played. As Crouch comes back to Westbrook. First down, his first completion of the game, and he's out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. What a gamer, huh? Big game, didn't practice all week, said he could go, limped around. He's been a decoy the whole game, but just enough. You got a tight football game with a chance to win the Big 12 championship and the national championship. You go. This is a clutch drive. 17 yard gain for Wister. The ball is inside the 20. Diedrich cuts for an alley and heads for the end zone. Stuck at the two yard line by Everidge. That sets up the power game for the Huskers after that 16 yard run. Well, it's been the passing game that has opened up the running game for Nebraska. You'll see it right here in a gash inside. What a run by Diedrich. From Canada. To Nebraska through the Oklahoma defense. What a read on that one. Not a great receiver is Dietrich, but an outstanding running back. Eric Crouch will be looking for touchdown number 56. He already has the NCAA record. First he'll send Diedrich into the end zone. So he comes right back with Darren Diedrich. And the Huskers. An extra point away after an impressive drive. And Dietrich basically kind of walks into the end zone right there. He does the dive just to be safe. Then locked at seven as Josh Brown adds the extra point. They couldn't do it running. They do it passing. They go 80 yards in 10 plays. We're deadlocked. Timeout. Almost three quarters of the 80 yards through the air for Eric Crouch. So the Nebraska coaches adjust. They see they've got daylight. By using a double tight end formation, they can break receivers open, and Crouch does the rest. A lot of it off play action, but he started off the drive just dropping back and throwing. Now you looking for a savage return. He's got speed, and there's a penalty flag down out of bounds at the 29-yard line. But again, the yellow came flying. The Pacific Life Game Summary. The young quarterback for OU, Jason White, injured and out, and Nate Hibble, the Trent Smith for the Oklahoma touchdown. Then Diedrich barrels in, and we're deadlocked at seven. So the holding call against OU on the return. Everybody has talked about the two main advantages Nebraska has in this football game an experienced quarterback and the home field advantage. Another one is that Oklahoma has been penalized more than Nebraska 76 yards a game. You have to watch that Oklahoma susceptible to penalties. Hibble. Back in the gun inside the 10. Going to throw off the fake high. And incomplete Josh Norman, the intended target. Coming up on the Capital One halftime show, John and scores and highlights from around the country. Terry will take a look at a surprising underdog, the undefeated Maryland Terrapins. Well, Gary Danielson, I guess uh, uh -oh. your guys at Fresno State turned out to be a mirage after all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I had my doubts about him. I know, yes, he did. 
They lose for the second time in a row, in case you haven't heard. No safety for Nebraska. No safety at all. Everybody within four yards of the line of scrimmage. Well, let's see if Hibble can get to the middle on him. He can't. Throws over Norman, incomplete, going sideline. And Bull told us that he wants to get it clear out the middle well, because Kansas State did it. But that time we saw a corner breaking that way as Craver was slipping back out of it. I really think Oklahoma, especially the point that Jack made, Nate Hibble did not get a lot of practice time. I don't even know if he's 100%. We saw him throw very poorly after he hurt that shoulder. We saw the lob to Trent Smith. That was an easy one. Let's see if Hibble has it all together yet. Here's the third down. Sooners don't want to give up field position. There's Trent Smith again. What a go-to guy he's been turned out to be. Short of the first down, though. Yeah, just short. And there goes White back to the Oklahoma locker room with an injury to the left knee. And we hope that's not serious. But it, it didn't look good, did it, folks, the way he was on now, the sideline? Think about this, though, Brent. All the work you put in the offseason, oh. the battle he's had with Hibble, he wins the job, a huge football game, and you're limping off because you twist your knee. Now Ferguson. Drives it. Gross is back. Cuts back. He's got daylight. Midfield. Here he comes. Brought down. 28-yard line from behind. Brandon Moore saves the day for OU, but it's a 33-yard return, and Nebraska's in business, folks. Throws the corner, and you can see the effect here right there. It was just a little late of the gunner coming down the field and slowing down not to get that halo infraction. Some, a lot of people now, Brent, are thinking, let's take the five yards and get inside the halo because when you slow down, you give an athlete like that an opportunity to run it back. Nebraska lines up in the power eye, too tight. Here's Diedrich on the toss. He beat Kalmus. Now he is brought down by Lehman. He slipped past Kalmus that time, and Lehman makes the stop. First down, so important in this game. This time, two tight ends. You're just going to see everybody come off right here. Power football, pulling the backside tackle, just sticking up in there, seeing if the speed of Oklahoma can be run at instead of trying to run around in that defense. And they were trying to run away from Rocky that time, weren't they? Second down. They'll stick with Dietrich. Hole left side. And he explodes for a first down. Just short of the 15-yard line, Matt Milt Tenapor, one of the great line coaches in the history of college football, folks, is upstairs in the booth. I'll tell you right now that he has adjusted completely the way they're blocking the front, and they're opening huge holes right now. Watch Steve Crewell right there, number 45, in practice Thursday. Both fullbacks. Judd Davies didn't even practice, and Crewell, number 45, was limping all day. Both fullbacks have sucked it up. Freewald is in the game. And what a block he got on the knees. Fonati helping lead the way. Diedrich is hit this time. Yes, he As Calvis <laughs> comes across, tackles him for a loss. A reminder, next Saturday now, we'll have regional action coming your way at 3.30 Eastern time. Florida State, Clemson, Oregon State, USC. Gary, you and I will be in the Midwest. We'll have one of these two Big Ten games, either Michigan, Michigan State, or Illinois at Purdue. Rocky Kelmas coming in the back door on that play. Frank Stolich, he said those linebackers from Oklahoma do such a good job of coming in behind the play with their speed and making it. You saw Kelmas do it on that play right there. And add a couple more for Kelmas here today, too. Tackles for a loss. Second down and 12. Got one on the one out here. Timeout. Yep. Crouch. I think Crouch saw what he had and changed the play. He's got 337. He'll go over and talk about it. Frank Solich said they have not had a delay a game this year. So you see how well Crouch is handling the clock. Let's go down to Jackaroo, Jack. Well, Brent, you talk about the game of the century. Let's take you back to 1971. One man that made it memorable, Johnny Rogers. Another man with his call, also making it very memorable. Let's listen to Chris Schenkel. Rogers gets away. Look at that. 
Johnny Rogers. Look at the move by that sensational player, a native of Omaha, and he is going, going, gone. Ah, uh, going, going, gone. I got <laughs> They use that for the days over. Anybody does it against these two great defenses. 337 to go and through the years with these two schools. This is the 80th time that they have played. Of course, when they became the Big 12, the rivalry was interrupted. Remember, they don't play each other because really the arch rival for Oklahoma is Texas. So they make sure that they play every year in the uh, in the South Division. And uh, it's nice to see Oklahoma and Nebraska back together. Last year, of course, they were 1 2 in the BCS. Only Nebraska was 1. They jumped out to a 14 0 lead, and OU hit them with 24 second quarter points. We don't have that kind of a wide open affair here today in Lincoln. It's tied at 7 now, and we've got second down coming up for Nebraska. They'll put Thunder Collins in motion. They give it to him, and Thunders! Down at the 15 yard line with Wolfolk, that cornerback who also plays wide receiver, number 17, making the stop. Wolfolk, who did such a great job against Texas, but you watch Wistrom right there on the outside against Brandon Moore, the, off uh, the outside linebacker. And I thought Collins had some room, and Wolfolk, such a valuable player, being able to do two things. We saw him lock up on Roy Williams, the outstanding receiver for Texas. The guy's got big time talent, and it looks like he can tackle also. So now another timeout is being used here by Nebraska. Well, we've got a got a moment, folks. Let me tell you about something that's coming up that I think a lot of you are going to be interested in because today's game ball is going to be donated to eBay's Auction for America. Now, players and coaches from both these schools are going to sign it, and 100% of the final purchase price will benefit the victims, families, and communities impacted by the terrorist attacks. You can log on to www.ebay.com slash ABC Sports to place a bid for the ball. Now, folks, let me just point this out to you. Let me hype this ball a little bit if I can. Let's raise some money for those yes. victims. Let's say that Eric Crouch wins the Heisman, all right? That would be a pretty good half. Roy Williams wins the Thorpe. That'd be pretty good. Have a Rocky Kalmus winning the Butkus. You got three big award winners possibly on that. Let's say one of these two schools, Nebraska and Oklahoma, goes on and wins the national championship. Heck, it's going I may start second. bidding for that ball. Where is eBay? The you got thing. the other computer guy down it up there. Look at the other thing, you're not going to have a lawsuit when you get it either, like the Barry Bam. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It won't be stolen, folks. We guarantee it. <laughs> we'll send it to you in a nice package. Wave that flag high. And again, I don't know. You know, in the old days, a lot of these tapes used to go over to the servicemen over in the Middle East. And I hope this one winds up. And uh, guys, there's a lot of folks in here, millions of millions of them across this country pulling for you guys and gals over there. Never, ever forget it. We're behind you 100%. Third Nebraska's down. Nebraska's going to go empty backfield. Look and see if we get a quarterback drop. Here's Crouch. Struggles and held on at the 10, but he's short of the first down, and Nebraska's got the field goal unit ready. Tried to do the wide receiver scene to screen to Thomas that time. Mike Stoops, defensive coordinator, backed his defense off. You see the end right here drop, and as receiver comes in, he almost is in the way of that play. Wilkerson's going to come in, back off right there, reads the play. And Thomas juggles and catches. This for the lead. 27 yards for Josh Brown. Makes it good. Nebraska's first lead. They trailed it by seven. Then they tied it. Then they kicked the field goal to take the lead here. I thought that was a big stop by the Oklahoma defense following the punt return. Brandon Moore, remember, makes the tackle by the shoulder pads to save the touchdown. And then the defense stinks and makes just the field goal. Let's go back down to Jack, Jack. Well, Brent, you know the regular schedule. You don't know, Jack. The way you involve, get involved is to log on and leave me a question at abcsports.com. Well, this week, Tracy from Texas wanted to know a little bit more about corn production here in the state of Nebraska. Well, Tracy, number one, corn production ranks third in the nation behind Iowa and Illinois. Over 8.5 million acres are dedicated in the state of Nebraska to corn production. Over 1.14 billion bushels of corn. Now, how did they get the name the Corn Huskers? Well, real simple. A sports writer in 1900 said, I don't like bug eaters anymore. He started to call them the Corn Huskers. And you know, Jack, today the pheasant season is opening in Nebraska. They haven't harvested all that corn, and it's causing some of my hunter friends some problems. 
Most of them are probably in the uh, small towns right now. Over there in those cafes and saloons scattered across this great state watching this game. Tracy Wistrom, one catch, and it wound up being a big one because it set up the Nebraska touchdown. Darren Diedrich, the Canadian eye back, slams in for the Cornhuskers' only touchdown. But because of a field goal, they lead Oklahoma 10 7 in a battle between numbers one and two in the BCS poll, and the Sooners are coming out. Oklahoma has only thrown for 63 yards. They have to find their passing game to win. Nate Hibble replaced the injured Jason White under center. Griffin goes nowhere. He's jumped by Burrow, the middle linebacker. Sort of an awkward take from center yes, it that was. time, Gary. It was. You can see the lack of practice time for Nate Hibble. Not sure again how healthy that arm is. It's his left shoulder, but it seems to have affected his throwing. Doesn't look like those little finesse run plays are going to go against this great Nebraska defense. Trying to spread the field. Again, no safety. No tight end. Hibble just threw it away. Nobody had broke out. It was a busted play, and uh, I think he thought Norman was going to keep going on it. Well, the coaches on the sideline were yelling at Norman, and Josh Norman turned around and yelled back. But I, I think you see a little bit of miscommunication from a quarterback that didn't get a lot of work and his receivers. One of the things I don't believe in is giving one quarterback all the snaps in practice. The way quarterbacks drop nowadays in all of football, I think you have to have two ready to play. Here's third down and nine for the Sooners. A strike for the first down, and he puts it in the hands of Martin Clayton, the redshirt freshman from Arlington. Well, Mark Clayton caught eight passes last week, but you can see, you sync up the quarterback with Nobody in his face this time. Hibble gets to step into his throw in a perfect route by the freshman, going just beyond the first down marker and catching it. That's the good communication. And you know, folks, that was a big play. Oklahoma may not be able to finish it off, but Nebraska was going to have field position with a minute and a half to go. Now OU keeps it. Long, Savage, jump ball, incomplete. Craver and Antoine Savage. What a great duel that was. A little mistake by Nate Hibble that time. He thought it was press coverage and he was throwing the fade route. Nebraska lined up in press but just bailed out of there. They were giving him the insta the short throw. You see the defender, he actually beat the receiver to the ball. Goes up, jump ball, and this time the fabulous play that helped Oklahoma a year ago. No bounce this time. Not off anybody's foot. <laughs> what a play by Wolf last year. 119. Second down for Hibble and the Sooners. Complete. Behind the receiver. Savage had his man beaten. Hibble did not lead him across the field. Against these type of man coverage players, you've got to get the guy kidding on the run. And I've been pretty impressed with the protection that this Oklahoma offensive line has given. The eight sacks last week against Baylor doesn't seem to be showing up yet in this game. I think Fields may be back. Yes, he is at that uh, right tackle spot. Number 71 is back there at right tackle. Third down and 10. Carter, the other true freshman, is the center. They try to get in on Hibble. They force him out of the pocket on the move and a diving reception at the 49-yard line by Clayton for a first down Oklahoma with 108 at 16 yards and Clayton now starting to step up. Fields does a nice job right here pushing Kelsey by. Hibble feels that pressure, moves up, and then finds the angle. Hibble throwing off the run. Beautiful throw. Again on the move and he just threw it away wisely. <laughs> Kelsey won that one though, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> Well, one side's pretty solid. Frank Romero, number 63, has not given up a sack all year. You mentioned that. But this other side right here, this is a problem. 
Kelsey knows he's got a freshman. He goes oh, inside boy. this time. Hibble did a good job of just making second and ten. His feet. Yeah, yep. He's got to keep those feet. Well, he, he, just... he's all right going wide. Yeah. But because uh, he pushes, he, you know, he can extend. And he's probably pretty strong. And Kelsey knows with the quickness, he's not keeping those feet moving and shuffling over there on him. Oh, he'll learn. He's a young one. Second down. Oh, he's got time. Got a man wide open at the 30 yard line. First down, Oklahoma, Antoine Savage. Now, remember, Hibble and Savage hooked up for the two big touchdowns against Kansas State. That's Savage's two big scores. And there's a 32 yard reception. And if nothing else, you figure Oklahoma is going to get even with a Duncan field goal because of that play right there. Nebraska tried to run an end stunt, tackle end stunt. They all ran into each other that time. Oklahoma didn't have to block anyone. And then there was a crossing route in the secondary. Nebraska lost the guy. Clear open play. Now, Trent Smith has a huge size advantage as a receiver. He's off the line to Hibble's right. On first down. They'll bring that in around again. Double reverse. Throw back. And Hibble slipped. Oh, Hibble would have walked in from the 15-yard line. As Mark Clayton threw it back off the double reverse. And Hibble simply slipped with the end zone in the crosshairs. Here's the passer right over here. Coming around one way. He's going to go downfield. Hibble got knocked down. That's really what changed it a bit. And then he slipped. Oh my, that's a walk into the end zone. What a play, what a dialed play for Oklahoma. Man, Gino makes the call of the day and they just don't <laughs> score off it. Now it's second down and 10. Here's that matchup right here, you said to Trent Smith. Northern got it, out of bounds. At the two yard line with 37 seconds to go and the Sooners with a pair of timeouts. Watch this throw. Beautiful route to the corner this time. Again, no one in Hibble's face. When he has time to throw the ball, he is accurate with that football. We saw it early in the year and big plays from Nate Hibble. I mean, you got to say a lot for Chuck Long getting his backup quarterbacks ready. We saw it against Texas, and now we see the Nate Hibble right here. Don't get a lot of snaps, but they have been ready mentally to play. Griffin is there. Tony is a blocker. It's a first down. Here's Griffin. Stop. He's got that great nose for the end zone. Timeout, Oklahoma. They send in the timeout for the bench. Lance Donnelly, the tight end, just raced up to the line judge. Called the timeout. You know what was interesting? Donnelly raced in like he was a substitute, made the timeout, and then raced back over to the uh, A lot of teams are doing that. That way the coach can control that timeout situation. But designated timeout guy, you think that's a scholarship position? Come in, call timeout, run out. Well, Oklahoma answered and stopped Nebraska. Now we'll see if this Nebraska defense can stop. Oklahoma still has one timeout, so they can dial any play in their repertoire. So bad game. Oh, no, great game. You know, I wonder if, Jay, if Jason White was in the game, if they go option here. That would be the logical call that Oklahoma likes to run. We'll see if Nate Hibble can do it. They might fake to Griffin and come up throwing, too. Well, they, get, they can run anything they want. I mean, it's, it's second down. They got a timeout here, so they can go run or pass. Tough call for it, Greg Moore. It looks like Trent Smith has such a size advantage yes. over the DBs that they might try to. I will see. But uh, Chuck Long upstairs and Mangino down in the field. You can go Long pass. You can go pass run, so you save your timeout for the field goal, or you can go run, call a timeout, and pass. And then if you don't have it, you save fourth down for a field goal. Got that option formation in. Here's Griffin. He's stuffed. Kelsey. Well, he beat Fields that time badly. That was a very surprising call to go Why as a freshman tight end tackle. Fields no, instead of was, Romero. Guy. I wonder if it was a check with me. I saw him check, but you could see Kelty just runs right around Fields. Very, very surprising call to go at the freshman against that good football player. So the Sooners 
use their last time out. Now they got 23 seconds to go. Now and they've got like, third down. So now you throw yes. and you throw it out of the end zone. If you don't have anything, you kick the field goal. So now you take fade. a shot at yes. the end zone and uh, then you kick the field goal if it's unsuccessful. That's pretty easy strategy to figure out here. This is where I like Trent Smith or the uh, really all of the receivers for Oklahoma have good size. They all go about six foot six foot one. So the best matchup is the one you can throw the fade to. Boy you practice and you game plan one of those plays that can get you a cheap seven points and your quarterback slips down. Bobby Stoops is saying oh man oh man. If they had a timeout, you could like run the quarterback draw in yes. this situation, but uh, they can't. They can't risk that right here. So here comes Hibble trotting back onto the field. You see number 63, Frank Romero. He's just an outstanding offensive lineman. The left tackle. Looking for Clayton, and they'll settle for the field goal. Coming in on him was Deion Booker that time on the blitz. He got the pressure on Hibble. Smith, Booker was lined up over Smith, but he came off. You see Booker, McPherson is right there, and there's that little chart. That's what I like to throw down there. You get a tight end against a smaller corner. I like that play. Force the official to call offensive pass interference. So here's Duncan for the tie. 20 yarder. Number 40, Tim Duncan. And the right hash. And we are deadlocked at 10. Let's nice see. little somersault there by Duncan at the end. And uh, OU in Nebraska with 19 seconds to go in the first half. And uh, let's check in with Jack and Root. Well, Brent, as you know, Tim Duncan had more than his share of problems early in the season converting field goals. But it seems that what happened is he got a phone call. Actually, his special team coach, Jonathan Hayes, got a phone call from a Steelers special team coach who happened to be Duncan's brother. So, I mean, uh, happened to be uh, the Steelers coach, Hayes' brother. And he said, hey, I think he's got a problem in his approach to the ball. Well, then all of a sudden, a high school kicking coach called, same story. Another coach called, same story. Finally, Hayes says, well, I figured they must be right. Discussed it with Duncan. We made the change, and now he's hitting a lot more field goals. I asked him if he could be a little more specific about what the change was. He said, Jack, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> oh, kickers. Different breed. Bobby Stoops, you can see him going over what he wanted Duncan to do here at the uh, now watch here at the end of the kickoff and he's celebrating a holder and 59 knocks McCoy. Oh and, it's like bowling huh? pins, huh? Yeah, over he goes, huh? <laughs> I don't think you're gonna get a call on that one. No, no, no love tap. And this time. Sam Stoops wants to take this one deep. Line drives it. And it'll be fielded at the 10-yard line. Hasselbrook with a great return and eight seconds remaining here for the Cornhuskers. Well, let's see. Two even teams, 10 10. Not bad, huh? Pretty good. And Nebraska has not trailed in the second half this season. And they will enter it deadlocked at 10. So the uh, Cornhuskers and the Sooners battling for that number one spot. You know, what's the also, also interesting in this game, Brent, is the winning team has come from behind in 25 of the last 34 wins. So neither team is ready to kind of give this game up. Here's Crouch. Stopping the clock with uh, only four seconds left, and they're not close to even trying a field goal here. So Wilson Thomas, who's been the favorite target of Eric Crouch here today. I guess the only play now with four seconds if you want to do that if you're Nebraska is throw the deep tip ball. The Clock one thing end. that the OU defense has certainly done in the first half is take away the run game from number seven. Six like carries for six yards is all Eric has here today. Passing though he's 10 of 15 going to try to put it up for number 16. And it is intercepted by Everidge as time runs out. 
The crowd wanted an interference Absolutely. call on the sideline, and then the half could not have ended. But they're not going to get it. It's 10 10, Oklahoma and Nebraska. John and Terry, take it away in New York. Well, Oklahoma will get the ball to uh, start the second half, Gary, and we just saw Jason White try it on his knee, had his helmet on, but uh, it looked like that knee was still pretty no, bad No, couldn't shape. do it. He made one throw and yeah. he walked back. I mean, quarterbacks have been the story. Oklahoma has stopped Eric Crouch. He's only run the ball six times, Brent. Half of those, three of them for negative yards. And, of course, so Oklahoma loses the quarterback, and Nate Hibble comes in and does some big good things for him. Yeah, obviously, Crouch, the focus of the OU defense, and what a defense this is. We could point out several players who have made big plays time after time in the first half. Really has. You, they come at you in waves. You think it's Calmus, you think it's Roy Williams, but they've got tremendous players at each level, and that's really what makes any great defense, not just one good guy, but about eight playmakers. Now with the wind at their back, OU decides to take a knee. I should say the wind was at the kicker's back, so as to not confuse you. And here is our Chrysler drive summary here. Look at that. Remember Frank Solich said, I won't be nervous about punting the ball. Oklahoma has not started one drive in plus territory. That's how you get to play good defense. You know, you would think the way this game has gone that it will turn on a defensive player. He will make the key play as we check our halftime stats here. Yeah, most of those 140 yards passing, a good gulp of them was in the last drive. And look at Nebraska, more passing yards offhand than rushing yards. So Nate Hibble, who came in off the bench, led OU to their touchdown. He'll run the quarterback draw to a wide open middle of the field. Breaks free to the 39 yard line. 19 yards for him on that uh, return. We go to Jack Aru. Well, when I talked to Frank Solich, he was very happy with the performance of his team, but he did say that he saw that Oklahoma's defense was allowing him to pass. He says Crouch should put it up in the air more. Meanwhile, when I talked to Bob Stoops, Stoops said he was very pleased with the performance of his team. In fact, told me he doesn't see any change in the offensive game plan in the second half with Hibble at the controls rather than White. Except Nate Hibble slipping a little bit after that run. On first down for Hibble and the Sooners. Bobbles a snap. Comes up firing. Intercepted on a beauty. A ricochet. Sweeney gets his hands on it. Turnover. What a great interception for Irwin Sweeney. The bounce last year went to Oklahoma. The bounce this year as Hibble catches the snap, bobbles the snap, picks up the ball. But there it is. The ball is thrown. Again, slightly behind. There's the bounce right off the face mask, and Sweeney gets it. Savage goes up. I think it hits him in the face mask. It does, right in the helmet. And Sweeney gets the tip. Remember, Brent, a year ago, the tip went the other way. Yes, it did now. Brings Thunder Collins around. He's got the corner. Look out, sideline. Tripped up from behind by Derek Stray, who saved a touchdown as Collins was thundering for the end zone. What a great block on Roy Williams. John Clem right here. Watch him get Williams, a backup, in for one play. You, your whole game plan, Clem, just come in and get Roy Williams. Thunder Collins will go down the sideline, and Derek Strait, another save. The second save of the day. Brandon Moore had one. Watch. Williams will come in. There's the block. Look at that block from the wide receiver, and he stayed high, too. And Collins is shaken up on the play. He's down on the sideline after his 39-yard run there, back on his feet. We'll take a break. Well, here's Collins heading for the end zone. Straight, wax him across the bottom of the leg, and he was injured on the play, off on the sideline, and now Diedrich pounds the middle of the defense to the 21-yard line with that run by Collins. Nebraska now has rushed 
over 100 yards in this game. They've run for 104 yards, well below their end. You want to see Nebraska power football? Watch Fonati come around. Watch the fullback come in there. Iso backside, number 77, number 45. This is power. Oh, oh man. Second down for the Huskers. Diedrich again. Middles open, stumbling to the six yard line. Where he is down, if he could have maintained his balance, he would have scored for the Huskers. But it's a first and goal, and they probe the middle with yeah. the running game. 14 yards here. Same play coming back, but watch Brandon Everett. He finds the umpire and loses the back. Watch him get right up inside there, and he kind of loses him right there. Right behind him, peekaboo, coming out the other way, and Everett can't find him. There's a first and goal. <laughs> Looking for a goal line stand after the interception. Nebraska trying to score. Deidre. Three straight and plays. Three with Roy Williams making the stop. Same play three times in a row. Rocky Kalmus is starting to understand the big guy, number 77. Fanotti had 32 pancake blocks. That's how you do it. You keep running ISO. Jack Aru, what's the situation with Thunder Collins? Well, you should expect to see Thunder Collins back, Brent. It's his left ankle. The doctor checked it over, said it was all stable. They're going to retape him up, and he'll be ready to go. Castle is the fullback. Bunch has got it, and OU reads it. Down at the 10-yard line because of Jimmy Wilkerson. Another negative play. You wonder if Nebraska didn't get a little too cute. The way they've been running the ball inside, this is Jimmy Wilkerson right here. Watch the coaches at the top. They know it. They know Crouch is the guy. Always keep your eye on the crowd. Right there. Yes, exactly the way I told him. Both coaching staffs inside goal line territory got a little too cute, running the ball right behind a freshman and trying a trick play down near the goal line. Nickel package in for OU. Thomas has been the favorite target. Crouch keeps it in trouble. Oh, Diving incomplete. Whoa. Just balanced, or it was almost picked off by Matt McCoy, who came in on the nickel package. And Nebraska will have to settle for a field goal. Watch the two guys, Venables and Stoops. Oh, move over. Adjustment. Watch the zone. Watch the quick trap, the quarterback draw, everything. But was it an interception at the end of this play? You can see Crouch by time, by time. Oh, man, Stoops is into it. Well, it looked like it dropped. It looked like it hit the ground no, to me. question. Yeah, it hit the ground very clearly. There's a 26-yard field goal attempt for the lead. Josh Brown. He nails it. An interception into three points, but Oklahoma did not give up a touchdown down there. That's big for their defense. 245 consecutive sellouts here at Memorial Stadium, and our aerial views are courtesy of Goodyear and its fleet of airships, covering major sporting events for more than 75 years on the wings of Goodyear. Sold out here in Lincoln ever since 1962. Think about that, folks. Go back to 1962. Get a seat, walk up and buy a ticket, come on in and see the husband. And the kickoff. In the end zone, it'll come out on the on the 20 yard line. And let's now take a look at this Morgan Stanley well connected storyline. As Gary's told you, Crouch has been the target of the Oklahoma defense. And they now have held him to zero net yards rushing. Crouch to Thomas. The first half, he threw at him eight times, six catches for 48 yards. Crouch passing is 10 of 17 for 102 yards. No touchdowns and one interception. I think if you would tell. Frank Solich that Eric Crouch had zero yards rushing and you're winning the football game. You feel good about where you're standing if you're Nebraska. Leading by three, 13 10. First down for Hibble and the Sooners. Toss Griffin beats the end. No. From behind, number 57, Chris Kelsey. What a game he has had. Kelsey, Nebraska goes with their three linebacker look when Oklahoma puts two running backs in the football game. Scott Shanley, number 43, was there, but Kelsey is unblockable so far. Jared Fields is going, 
man, it wasn't like this in high school. I mean, I had those little guys that could push around. Kelsey is having his way with the freshman tackle. Here's the dime package for Nebraska defensively. Second down and 10. They think Hibble's going to throw it, and they're right. He'll look middle. He's got his tight end, Smith, for a first down for 12 more yards. Nothing that the little DBs could do about right. that. I'll tell you, Craig Bowl in Nebraska, when they look at this film afterwards, is going to complain about Trent Smith pushing off on his routes. He comes down against McPherson, number one, and he is very physical, just like you want to be. Go through that jam and pushes off with his right hand. McPherson cannot handle that. That is a great matchup for Oklahoma. Smith, the leading receiver, five catches for 48 yards for the Sooners, and their touchdown. Now it's first and 10. They've got Savage on an end around, and Nebraska was ready for it. Schlechter, number 56, the senior defensive tackle, was right there. I think McPherson needs to get off of Trent Smith, Brent, a little bit and use his speed. Don't try to muscle him. Force Smith to run his routes and cut underneath those throws. That'll take that tight end away. Oklahoma does not change its personnel offensively, so Nebraska sticks with its 11 players. And now it'll be second down. Middle is open deep. Here comes the blitz. Book almost got there. Deion Booker getting there. He left the middle wide open. That is twice that Hibble has not adjusted when he sees the middle clear. All they have to do is lob something down the middle. Man, it's wide open here. Well, Booker's going to come right inside on them right now, but on this play, they happen to have a screen pass on. There's not much he could do. You can see there's the safety come from, from the other side. That zone blitz look is really what's doing the job against Oklahoma. Yeah, you pointed out how tough that is yes. to work against. Third down and eight now for Hibble. Booker now backs off. He's in center field. Now Hibble goes to the middle this time, and Smith again. He had the first down, but he may have been forced back. It's very, very close. It'll depend on the spot. And Hibble's he hurting. Hibble right is hurting. Mark, and here's Hibble now yep. limping. So they may have to go to their third quarterback, and that would be Hunter Wall. There's Hunter, number 14 over here. And we've seen him catch a touchdown pass. We haven't seen him throw. Now, if the starting quarterback gets 70% of the passes, you can assume the backup quarterback, Hibble, and that's going to be his shoulder. His left shoulder gets driven into the ground. Kelsey got yep. off his block and took him down. Starter gets 70%, backup gets 30%, third string, you're watching. You're running scout team. You get no snaps. The measurement and first down for tight end Trent Smith. His sixth catch of the game, keeping him going, so that also brings White is going to try it. Jason White. Here is the advantage of the shotgun. You don't have to drop. One of the things that you can do being in mobile, just stand there. And you know the Huskers are going to come storming. They know they've got a quarterback who's Gippy. Three seconds, got to hurry. And they'll run Griffin. The Huskers jump it, but Griffin picks up about four yards. Federal makes a stop. We check in with John Saunders. John. Brent, it's time for the Burger King update. Syracuse against Virginia Tech. Fields, who let Kelsey through, has been taken out here. Jamal Brown is in at right tackle for OU. Nebraska shows blitz. Booker. Incomplete intended for Smith, and it's third down, and they were storming Jason White. Zone blitz again. They come from one side, and they drop the safety to the opposite side. I'm telling you, Jason White could not do it. You'll see this guy go back, this guy come in. That's that zone blitz and fits package that so many people are seeing. There's no way Jason White could play if he had to take the snap from the center, drop back, and throw. Third down. Six for White and OU out of the shotgun. And there was movement. 
for the snap. So that'll cost OU five, and we check in with Jack Arruda on Nate Hibble. Well, Brent, they checked the medical personnel, checked out Nate Hibble. It seemed as if he got either poked in the eye or hit in the head. They were checking that part portion of him more than his shoulder. They made him, they made him run a couple of times back and forth, cleared his head. They've approved him to go back in. Yep, there he is, Jack. Got Just on cue wounded, when you said it. Two wounded quarterbacks here. One with a knee, one with a shoulder, woozy head. We saw that woozy head against Kansas State. Third down and 11, the go-to guy has been Trent Smith. But they need 11 yards. Booker shows blitz again. Now he, he's coming. They'll throw it up in the air. Well, incomplete as Gross turns back and makes a fabulous play on Mark Clayton. And this ball was thrown where you have to throw it. If you're watching this game and think it's a bad throw, really it's not. The ball should be thrown to the outside right here. Throw to the back shoulder. You depend on your receiver. That ball's a drop. That one was a drop. You depend on your receiver to catch that ball like that. And now Gross, deep to return this punt. Ferguson for OU. Nebraska leads it by a field goal. Gross at the 24. Nothing doing as Teddy Lindgren right there. Oh, he got 15 and a yards. Penalty flag. Yeah, he threw the ball. Hit him right in the head. Threw the ball, hit him in the head, and he's picked up a huge penalty, and the young man knows better than that. The young man knows he just made a big mistake. I wonder if he's going to be able to sell that it slipped out of his hand to the coaching staff because he turned around, threw the ball, and he knows it's going to cost this team about one ball on the 27 yard line or so. It's going to cost him 13 yards. Bigger problem for Nebraska is whether or not he's hurt. It's tackled by Teddy Lehman, spins around. He's got his ankle, Rocky Kelmus, right there, twisting his ankle a little bit, and that's what gets him upset. Yeah, the Rocky took a fastball Absolutely. to the back of the heart. That doesn't hurt. Look at him. He's got his yeah. ankle. Linebacker. He got his ankle. Yeah. That's just, that's the, that's big eight football. Now it's big 12, but that's how it started around here, right? That's why he was upset. No question. So now it's Crouch. And Nebraska. And you would think it's up to this OU defense now to get a turnover. They may have to score instead of the offense here in the second half. Crouch slips Harris. But not the second man for about three yards. Kalmus is right there. And a reminder coming up next, we've got Michigan, Iowa, Maryland, Florida State, UCLA, Stanford here on the network. I was just going to say, where is the option? Where is that option football that Nebraska is so good at? Penetration from Tommy Harris and the speed of Lehman and Kellis have stopped that option football. John Clem in that split in for Nebraska on second down. Toss Diedrich. And Diedrich is wrapped up by Mr. Kalmus. It's two straight tackles by Kalmus. And then the tackle on the punt return. And then he forced a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, he plays on all the special teams. <laughs> exactly. I mean, OU's special teams are special because they put their best players on it. Yeah, you're right. Brandon Moore, remember, made the big tackle on the punt return also. Third down and eight. The only consistent play for Nebraska today has been the passing game. And Crouch is 10 of 17 for 102 yards. Eden one here. Nebraska is forced to punt. Nebraska forced to punt as Kalmus makes still another stop. Steve Crewell, number 45, shows you how to pick up a blitzing linebacker. Watch 45, watch Roy Williams. You don't go for his ankles or knees. You stand up and take him on. Boom. Stop him right in his tracks. That's what you do. Good coverage downfield, though. Zone blitz again. Well, that zone blitz is a dynamic weapon in college football. This should be excellent field position. From behind Larson. Fagan couldn't see it for a moment. What a big punt this is by Larson with the wind in his back. Fagan will try to get some back. Ripped down at the 17. 
Oh, what a fierce war this is. Just like you figured, it's Oklahoma, Nebraska. Timeout. Oh, here at the third. Nebraska leading Oklahoma by a field goal. Backup quarterback Nate Hibble. His numbers for the afternoon. Checks in right back in the shotgun against the Nebraska defense. And they have been showing pressure with Hibble in the game, leaving center field open. And Hibble looking sideline on the slant. Got it complete to the 27-yard line. The Pacific Life game summary. And the quarterback story has been the one for Oklahoma. Jason White twisting his knee and limping off. Nate Hibble driven into the ground by Kelsey and forced to leave. But now White has come back for a couple of plays. And Hibble shaking off the damage to that left shoulder and the wooziness back on the field. And it is first down after Clayton makes the catch. He has three catches for 37 yards. Timeout is being called by OU. Well, we talked about what each team likes to do in this football game. Oklahoma pretty much following the game plan, but look at the story right here. Option play for Nebraska has been shut down and has forced Nebraska to go down here and throw the ball many more times than they wanted to. They've been successful, but they're a little bit out of sync for what a Nebraska likes to do. Nebraska needs the speed of Amon Green. He's down below with Jackaroo, Jack. Well, he's with us, Amon. I don't know if you have any eligibility left. Uh, I think I do. I did come out early, so I know I have, a, I have, a, I have a, a, a legit semester left. Let me ask you a question. As you watch this offense that's been created by Frank Solich, how does it compare to Dr. Tom's offense? Um, I say one one big difference that I've noticed, um, um, Coach Solich, he passes the ball a little bit more. You know, um, the running game is still effective, but he throws it up in the air a little bit more than Coach Osborne did. But, you know, back back when I was here with me, Scott, and Tommy, them guys, the run was real effective. We didn't have to pass the ball much, but when you kind of um, open up the offense, to hit him with the random pass, it makes him a little bit, just a little bit more effective. Well, it's good to see, and he's been hanging out with two guys over here. Matt Davidson, you remember that great play against Missouri, and Scott. Scott Frost, so all the big stars are back. All right, Demond Green having a great year with the Green Bay Packers. And now, Hibble on the quarterback draw, you can see it coming. Nebraska read it perfectly, and he's tackled at the 31-yard line. So here we are, Memorial Stadium, on a beautiful Saturday afternoon with Nebraska holding a lead by a field goal. After that interception by Sweeney on a ricochet off the face mask, Thunder Collins turned the corner. The key run in the game. He was injured on that play, remember? We haven't seen him since then. Derek and Strait now, saved the touchdown there. So now it is up to Hibble to drive the Sooners here. Second down. The swing left to Griffin. And Griffin's run down by Jamie Burrow, the middle linebacker, tracked him. Well, Sunday, join our friend Chris Berman and the gang. They'll discuss all the day's NFL games on NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. For you guys who are hardcore football fans, that's the show to watch. NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. Eastern Sunday. Third down now. Five yards to go here for OU. Let's look for Trent. Tight end. See if he goes to his matchup that has been working. There he is right there. McPherson. Is the defender on him. We'll try to square up, but Hibble likes to look to the left. First down at no. Clayton has grabbed it. Yes, it was a catch at the 40 yard line. Mark Clayton. One on one coverage. He got a first down earlier against this time against Sweeney. Runs the stop route, comes back, catches the ball. All the great receivers returning for Oklahoma. But Mark Clayton has made his mark as a freshman here. Coming through. Talent finds their way onto the football field, don't they? Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> Four catches for 44 yards. First down and 10. Uh, Hibble likes to look off to the left, doesn't he? Chris Griffin. He runs into Kelsey and friends. Tough slug against the left side of that defensive front. Clanton, the nose tackle, was there. So it'll be second down and long with 325 left here in the third quarter. Clayton 
is out to the left. Smith is down to the right. They run the toss. Throw back. Here comes the flea flicker. The throw from Norman. Almost intercepted. He was well covered. Pat Ricketts stayed with him going down the field. Number 28 did not give ground. He did not come up on the run. See, one of these flea flickers like this doesn't work when your defensive backs are playing man-to-man. -man. They're just looking at their receiver. They're not even seeing what's happening down there. They got their guy. They're playing. They're playing. They're playing. I got my man. If I stick with my man, like Coach says, I don't care what's happening back there. Nice job by Ricketts. Here's third down. You got Kraber on Smith. They're bringing him in the block. They agree to blitz. This is a blitz audible. Throws left deep. Incomplete. McPherson comes up big defensively for the Cornhuskers. Was that ball catchable? I thought Norman had a crack So at did it. I. McPherson was in cover. They put Kraber over on the other side on the tight end. And then Kimball checks to a blitz audible, keeps the tight end in. Ball was thrown in the proper spot. I don't know if McPherson got his hand in there or not. Cornelson replaces Gross as the return man, and they went after Ferguson. Did he get his hand on that puck? Yeah. So good field position for Eric Crouch. His ABC Sports presentation of college football. To see if this ball was catchable. Thrown up. Well, actually, McPherson did a good job, but that ball was catchable again. Someone needs to make a big play for Oklahoma. Only a 17-yard punt, and Eric pulls out. The receiver's covered, and he will not get away from Jimmy Wilkerson, who brings a lot of quickness. You bet. Stop by Jimmy Wilkerson. Well, we talked about Eric Crouch running the ball, and then he might have to play offhand with his passing in this game. He has done that. Look at throwing the ball all over the field. The only place he has it is throwing it left right there. But Eric Crouch has been effective enough throwing the ball to keep Nebraska in the game. Where is that isolation play that was so effective? Remember, fullback coming right up behind that big offensive guard, Bonatti, coming in there. Let's see if we see that again. Second down in nine. Here's Diedrich. Battles his way near midfield before Roy Williams makes the tackle. There's that isolation play. No Tenapor says, hey, coach. I know we love all those gadget plays and real, real pretty, but when we run the ball with big number 77 and 45, we're effective. Tracy Wister into the lineup this time. He's caught one pass. Galladay is the other tight end. They line up in the go? power formation here for third and two. And now Crouch is going to pull back. Wister overthrowing at the 30 yard picked him up checking into the lineup we knew he was on the field for a reason didn't have that next gear though that gear that so familiar when he's healthy Eric Crouch thrown to him so many times let it up there that time and Tracy only had didn't have fifth gear he only got it the fourth gear that time now gross does come in as one of the gunners he and Kramer are going to try to get downfield on Fagan Last punt was 68 yards for Larson. Wind is at his back. It will be at Oklahoma's back in the final quarter. And it sails. And hope it goes to the end zone. It won't. It's going to be down at the seven yard line. And we check in now with John Saunders. Thank you. And here, Nebraska <laughs> leads Oklahoma 13 to 10. Courageous performance from Nate Hibble right here. We saw him do it before. Brown stays in it, right tackle. Griffin. A couple of yards in the middle of that time, and as they probe away, 
Let's take a look now at Oklahoma's receptions for the day here, and you can see the tight end Smith leads the way. Well, they have so many different weapons, but the emergence of the tight end, I don't know if it's because of the lack of protection, not being able to get the ball downfield, but the tight end has become a bigger part of this offense than we could ever remember. Well, the big play guy is still Savage. He's the one who can get you yards after the reception if they can get it in his hands. Second down, Griffin again. So they're playing it very conservatively, coming out from the noisy end down there. No checkoffs. Just very content now if they have to wind up with a punt. And I think and the let the, they want to let the clock run out. Right. So they get the wind at their back. Very good not to throw the ball. I think you're playing field position at this time of the game. And they'll have it at their back. Though you saying the fourth quarter belongs to us. And Nebraska saying not so fast. <laughs> we'll return after this message and a word from our ABC station. And in. And Oklahoma stayed in the game, stayed in the game, got a big break, a turnover in the fourth quarter, and won that game last year. Well, two good defensive teams. I love the way Bob Stoops played to his punt game right here and took the win. Did not run an incomplete pass to stop the punt. And makes it pay off with that pass to Norman for the first down for Oklahoma. So Josh Norman from Midland, Texas. Gets right to that mark before he goes out of bounds. And to start the fourth quarter, a fresh set of downs for Nate Hibble and OU. The zone blitz has been good to Nebraska. Putting pressure on the quarterback and still getting a safety in the middle of the field. Let's see if they go back to that on second and third down. Four receivers. Hibble out under center. Here comes that into route. Norman. And it was read well on the left side of the defense Willie Amos came flashing up to cut it off so he could not get outside and force the play every time you watch Oklahoma play you appreciate more and more Josh Heifel a year ago and how he ran this offense he was a master at reading the blitzes understanding when he could hold the ball when he had to get rid of it right now Nate Hibble isn't there yet second down Hibble in trouble down at the 20 yard line. And that was Mark Bedrill making the stop for the Huskers. Zone blitz, zone blitz. You bring a guy off the corner, you drop back into the center. This is very difficult for a an offense that has no tight end and only one back to handle. You have to be on your on the ball. And this is a quarterback, remember, that didn't get a lot of practice time. Very difficult situation. Nebraska sticking with the four-man defensive line so far here in this half. Oh, no. And they got to hurry. There's only three Take seconds left, timeout. and there they have now used a second timeout yes. this half. That leaves them with only one. No, no, in a tight defensive game. We'll take a break. 57, Chris Kelsey. He sent one freshman lineman to the bench. He's beat up on a second one. He's driven a quarterback out of the game, and he's made life difficult for Quentin Griffin. So Chris Kelsey, whose brother was a great player here, doing a job on the slant. Hibble hits Smith, and he is short of the first down. The zone blitz did the job again. Bring an extra guy, drop back, force the quarterback to throw the ball short, and make the tackle. Hibble comes off favoring and holding his left arm. I think he's a little dingy, not even reading the signals very well from the sideline. That forced him into another timeout. So Gross is in to return this punt by Ferguson. Ferguson been in and out here today. Drives one. Takes an OU bounce out of bounds. ABC Sports presentation of Colorado look down on the sea of red. Corn Huskers, their average starting field position has been their 37, and Oklahoma their own 19. That's a switch for OU, folks. They have dominated all year. And they in still that have not started a drive in plus territory the whole game. 
So, so far, Solich's strategy, but he only leads it by three. Probes with the fullback and not much doing because of Wilkerson. 13-10 lead right now for Nebraska. You're wondering if they're just going to play conservatively, not try to punt the ball, but not do anything silly and turn the ball over. I don't think they believe Oklahoma can drive the ball on them with that blitz package they got going in. They've got to work into the win. So first downs for Solich could be huge in this quarter. You don't want to be sitting on a three-point lead against these guys too early. Second down. Here comes Dietrich spinning free, still going to the 36-yard line, and now it is third and short. That was kind of a bad, sloppy handoff from Eric Crouch that time to Dietrich. Dietrich did a nice job. The ball was handed up a little bit on the numbers right here. See if we can see it. There's Dietrich right back there. TV gets it up really high. Yes, real high on the shoulder pads. Dietrich did a nice job of finding the ball and not turning it over. You want to get that ball at the bottom of the numbers when you hand it off. Third down. And OU defense on third and short rises to the occasion. Kalmus again with pressure inside. Where Just do they spot this? Play. Boy, Nebraska wants to go for it, but I can't imagine they're going to go for it. Oh, that would be. No, no I can't no, imagine. They got to punt. Can't it. imagine. What a play Kalmus made that time. Pressure inside. He came in, dove in, and blew the play up also. And a defensive game, Kalmus and Kelsey have stood out so far here today. You make a good point about the win, though. Every exchange favors Oklahoma. And Fagan is up on Larson, who gets off a good one into that win. And it goes out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. 70 yards of turf ahead for Oklahoma and Hibble. Timeout. Today's aerial shots, it was 1925 when Goodyear first began coverage of major sporting events. Total yards for Oklahoma today, 300. For Nebraska, 239. And now it's the Nebraska defense which must dig in against Hibble. And the Sooners who are looking for a rally. Trailing it by three. From the pocket holds up a beautiful pass to Norman at the 45 yard line, 15 yards. We check in with Jack Aroot. Well, Brent and Gary, as we watch Nate Hibble uh, each time that the OU defense is out there, a mass of trainers and doctors surround him, questioning him, asking him to go through different movements to check on the shoulder and on his head. Then he moves over to Hunter Wall, and Wall quizzes him. I think probably Wall saying, You sure you're okay so I don't have to go in? Jack Nibble quiz him after that last play. That was a beautiful delivery from the pocket. He stayed right in the protected pocket, and the offensive line gave him the time. Now first 10. He's got time again. Stands and delivers. This time to Clayton, who slips away from Gross and makes it inside the 40-yard line. It's another first down. Two well-delivered balls here by Nate Hibble, and the Sooners are driving. He's also throwing to his left, which you pointed out earlier, a lot in this football game. But Clayton runs a tremendous route. A lot of fades in bump and run. You get kind of lulled into throwing fades all the time against bump and run deep. This time, run, go out, run that hook route, and force that corner not just to run you, but cover you. Nebraska's been unable to get close to Hibble on those two pass plays. They get close that time, and they force the incompletion. That was pressure that time that was coming hard up the middle. John Clanton, the nose man, was finally able to bring some penetration. Brent, uh, Nebraska saw the films of eight sacks for Baylor when they were doing a lot of stunting. Ends this way, tackles the other way. The stunting has taken too long. See the stunt to the outside, coming straight up the pocket is what you have to do in a quick release team. Don't have time to run stunts. Second down. Hands and releases. They came fly at number 57. Mr. Kelsey in on top of him. Not a chance in the world for Hibble that time. 
Now, if you go back to the first half, folks, watch Hibble. He's knocked down, gets up wide open. The end zone's there, and he slips. And that is a play that will linger in the memories of Sooner fans forever if Hibble can't finish off a drive here soon. I think Oklahoma needs about five to ten yards, if not a first down to kick the field goal. It's downwind. So on third down, Hibble's looking for that. Rolls to the right, throws against Kelsey, and he Clayton went rolling for it and pulled it in, and he uh, might have gotten enough yardage. It's going to be close. That's right, it's right on the edge. You got about four. Now, do you play field position if you're Stoops, or do you go for the three points? Do you punt the ball, or do you try to kick the long field goal? They're looking for a 50-yarder, Duncan, eh? Launch yep. onto the field. Here comes Timmy Duncan. And Matt McCoy will be his holder. Remember, Jason fix. White is his normal holder, but he's shaken up. They might so here comes they... a 53-yarder if they kick it. Right. Pooch it. They're going to play for field position. And they bury him inside the five. Folks, go back to the Texas game. That's exactly what set up the Roy Williams play. The pooch by Duncan. Timeout. About the game solutions. What would decide the game? Neither team has handled first down well. That's why there's not a lot of points. Both quarterbacks getting hit, but the big plays, the big plays might decide this game, and there's some big plays out there in their breads. Roy Williams off of that pooch against Texas came flying. But they set him out to the left side of the formation. A little bit different offense he's up against the Chris Sims here. And they hand off to Diedrich, and he goes to nowhere as the defense digs in now with Everidge making his stop. John Saunders. Brent Joe Paterno making it. Second down for Nebraska, trying to come out from inside the five-yard line. Coach has got a crease, his best run of the day. Out of bounds at the 24. Eric Crouch, 19 yards, and his biggest run of this game. 11 times he's carried the ball for 23, so you know what this run means. Watch the lineman run into the fullback right here. This is a run all the way, not an option play. You see the fullback and the lineman, the tailback, Diedrich, comes up and gets a great block inside. Quarterback follow, they call it. Follow the tailback, not part of the option package, but the biggest play so far for Eric Crouch. Breathing room for the Huskers. in the eye. Bring Thomas through in motion and strike goes with him. They'll toss to Diedrich. Diedrich on the toss play. Pounds his way to the 29-yard line and Williams is there for the stop. One play gets him out of trouble. Might turn the field upside down against that great Oklahoma defense. I don't believe Nebraska is going to call a play that can be a big turnover play. They're going to play this. it solid. Remember this too, Gary. OU is down to only one timeout with the seconds now starting to tick on him. A little field position going on. 7.37. OU needs that ball back. And a timeout. So Crouch will talk about it. has not allowed anyone to run the ball on it. This is a Nebraska offense in this football game, 163 yards, but they're number one in the country in rushing, averaging 339 yards a game. I do believe Nebraska is going to have to go over 200 to put this game away. And Oklahoma's defense has scored in seven of the last ten regular season games. So it's an opportunistic defense that will attack Diedrich this time, and it'll be third at about five. You can see how far they've got to go, and first and ten this quarter is brought to you by Chevy Trucks. So that's the distance facing Nebraska, and this is going to be a big play. Third down, I got to put the ball in Eric Crouch's hands. I would run the option play, but I would tell him, be careful of the pitch. Don't just be flapping that ball all around. Rocky Kalmus will be looking for just that. Number 
420 ready. So there's seven on the other side, and here he comes. Running away. Penalty flag. Face mask on the play. Crouch goes down at the 26-yard line. Huge call. Huge call. Inadvertent. I think it was Jimmy Wilkerson, number 45. They just got him by the edge of the face mask. It'll be a five-yarder, but it'll be at the first down. Incidental face mask. Is it Brandon Moore, number 46? Is it Heineke, number 89? It looks like it's Heineke. There you see it. Incidental, five yards. He got him right across the face mask. That's all you need to call the five yard. Nebraska did come with the option, but Oklahoma was ready for it. So a reminder. Conclusion of the game will select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. First down and 10. On the end around, the double reverse. And they're going to throw off of it. Coach is open. He's got it. Fingers for the end zone. They won't catch him. Eric Crouch zips into the end. for the Heisman down there in the end zone, folks, on this play. Both teams have the same play. Oklahoma has it. Kibble slips, stunts, throws it to number seven, catches the ball, the same play. One slips, one doesn't. It might be a trip to the Rose Bowl. Nebraska what got penalized. What a call. Penalized for over-celebration. They're going to go back. What a call by Frank Solich. He's the offensive coordinator. The headset off over there on the sideline. And uh, wants a clarification on the uh, celebration penalty. And he's saying, if we don't celebrate that, what do we celebrate? <laughs> As it's being brought back now. How about how the 25 yard break. line? So the young man from Council Bluffs, Iowa. St. Albert High School. He had been in a few plays, we are told, by spotter Brian Mobleson, but only as a decoy. They brought him on the end around, and folks remember he tossed it left handed. No one had scouted that play. The extra point is up. Got it. So Josh Brown from Foyle, Oklahoma, adds the extra point, and Nebraska leads OU by 10. Watch the pitch here. This pitch is not clean. Stunt does a nice job of catching it. He bobbles it, then runs, takes his time, and hits Crouch right on the numbers. Very interestingly, yesterday, Nebraska on Friday usually practices in the stadium. Greg Solich took his team to the practice field. Maybe he was working on this trick play. So Crouch makes it work. And Here's how the radio announcers called it here in Lincoln. First down and 10 to go. Here's a hand up to Thunder who gives it back to Mike Stunts. He's going to throw it. He's got a man out yeah. there. 40. It is. Eric Crouch. 15, 10, 5, oh, touchdown. Yeah. So now the ball's on the tee with the Huskers. Leading it by 10, and the nation's longest winning streak is in jeopardy. So the throwback to the quarterback works for Nebraska and fails for Oklahoma. Short kick and a fair catch by Norman at the 24 yard line with 6 11 to go. We talked about it would be a big play that might turn this game. Oklahoma against Texas had the big play on defense. Here, Frank Solich dials one very similar to the one Oklahoma had, didn't complete it. Turns out to be the difference in the game. Two huge plays by Crouch. Let's go back when they were trying to come out down here. He finds the crease and runs for the first down. 
Then he catches the long touchdown pass. That run was 19 How about yards. the huge play on the face mask when they had him stopped? So now it is up to Hibble. First down. Here's the toss off the option. Look to Griffin. Look over the corner. Out of bounds. Picked up about seven yards. Kelsey, the defender there. So Eric Crouch now, 11 carries for 23 yards, one reception for 63 yards, and a touchdown. Nebraska now can continue to pressure the quarterback with their zone blitz package. It's not a bit of a gamble at all to bring people and stay in zone. Second down and two. Quarterback draw. Hibble short of the first down, and it is third down. So you go back now to two plays. We have seen Eric Crouch make it work. Now this one, watch. In the first half, after getting knocked down, he's wide open for the throwback. So one works, Gary, and one doesn't yes, work. Yes, that's exactly right. Three big plays on that drive. Crouch's run off the goal line, Heineke's face mask, and then the gamble by Frank Solich that works for a touchdown on the throwback to the quarterback. Third down for Hibble. Off the blitz, he's got the first down. Norman to the 40-yard line. This a defining game for Solich. And he lost this one at home with the schedule that they've got being the favor here today. There would have been howls. Remember, it took Tom Osborne years before he won a national championship. The feeling in Nebraska, Solich will not be given that much time. But after that call and this game, if the Cornhuskers hold up, then Frank Solich will be the king at least for a weekend around here. Back goes him. Middle high, incomplete. Time permitting now. Stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. Scores and highlights from across the country. And how about the job of Mike Stunts, the left handed throwing quarterback who is also a wingback? Very interesting, though. It was set up, as Brian Mobleson told you. He was brought in the game a number of times to kind of decoy it so he didn't stick out like a sore thumb when they had the big play on. Remember, Oklahoma only has one timeout. Should they score, they're going to have to go onside kick. Blitz audible, bring the tight end in. They're going to max protect. Evel is back. Under pressure. Fires incomplete. So let's check in with John Saunders on Virginia Tech. Still in trouble, John? John, Nebraska is up now by 10. We're inside of five minutes. Down he goes. Jamie Burrow makes the play. They blitz from the side, but they keep Deion Booker in center field. None of those deep, loud throws for cheap touchdowns. Coming off the side right here, the linebacker's going to cover. Look at this. No all-out blitz. There's the safety in the middle. If Kimball completes it, he's only going to get a first down, not a touchdown. Good coach. Ferguson. Ferguson on the 19. Upended at the 24 yard line. So here is your. Pacific Life game summary and it has been the tale of two plays Gary it really has Oklahoma tried it first the throwback to the quarterback one guy slips and in a huge game the other guy doesn't and another chapter is added to the Oklahoma Nebraska lore 15-yard penalty, I think, has just been assessed to the Oklahoma bench. I think Bobby Stoops is still unhappy with that face mask call in that last drive. 
He thought he got his shirt, not the face mask. Following that play, the big play down to Crouch for the touchdown, and Stoops has not forgot it. First down and 10. The nation's longest winning streak is in jeopardy. OU, 20 straight wins coming in here. There's the young man who's got a great, great future, Tommy Harris, freshman defensive lineman. The only thing Nebraska needs to do now is not turn the ball over. Run the clock, run the ball, use up all of the 25-second clock. Three forty-six, and there's their last timeout. So we set a 20-game winning streak. Here's the last time they lost: Mississippi, Oklahoma, and in the bowl game. That is the last time that they tasted defeat until perhaps here today. And now we check in with John Saunders. I wonder what Mr. Friedrich can do in Tallahassee. That'll be a tough, tough test for him, Gary. Well, I'm still mesmerized by this game right here. You don't see many big games like that. Will that throwback pass be the play that we see in the future, like Johnny Rogers' punt return? A tremendous football game that usually turns on one play. Oklahoma now out of timeouts. Even handing the ball off anymore, are they? Nope. Just content now to bring yes. the clock down with Harris jumping him. About 17 seconds will run Harris. off before the 25 second clock even gets started, and then the 25 second clock will start. Let me just say that about this winning streak, it has been a magnificent run by Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma team. It was something that I don't think anybody saw coming. And even if they lose here today, that does not take away anything. And remember what I said at the top of the day. This could be the first of two games between these two teams. Oklahoma wins the South. What a rematch. That'll be in Dallas on December 1st. That'll be one of the great settings of all time. Because if Nebraska is still city number one, let's say they are, wouldn't Oklahoma love to knock them out of a shot at the Rose Bowl? And who's to say that OU won't have a chance the way the BCS is measured at the end of the In season? In fact, I think the game has been so close on Nebraska's home field, I don't think Oklahoma will drop very far in the polls. Yes, UCLA might have to lose. Something might happen to have something else for them, but they'll still be in the running. Absolutely. Because remember, watch, they've had a quarterback knocked out, yes. the other one injured. They've still hung in until the end. And now Fagan will try to keep him right in there with 2.22 to go. And try to block it. And Larson, who's done an excellent job playing, gets it off. Fagan rips free, looking for an alley. Nothing doing. Well covered that time. So Monday night. AFC Central showdown when the freak battles the bus. Javon Kirsten. You will not see Nate Hipple taking the snap from the underneath the center. He's going to go shotgun. It's going to be all pass now. And he'll quickly bring him out. Two minutes and six seconds to go. Forced to run. And he runs for a first down. Well, here are our Chevrolet players of this showdown. Rocky Kalmus held the fourth there at linebacker. And Eric Crouch coming up with the big plays in the money quarter. The Heisman Trophy candidate and one of the leaders showing the way here late for Nebraska. Overthrown. And let me thank some folks here. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz, the coordinating producer of college football, and our producer today, Bob, our director, Larry Cam, our technical director, Monty Poling, our associate producer, Mitch Green, our associate director, Brian Fay, the director of production, Bob Toms, our PAs, Kurt Thomas and Tim McDermott, 
the computer stats man, Anthony Holman, our production manager, Christy Bravi, our technical manager, Mark Towey, senior audio, Wendell Stevens. Second down now. Time running out on Stoops and the uh, and the Sooners' great run. Yeah, nice job by Ricketts there, number 28. Uh, Kibble is trying to throw the corner route. Ricketts is cutting off the receiver and forcing him to square off his route, and the two are not connected at all. The quarterback and the receiver. Still have two plays, third and fourth down. Third down and ten. Pressure. Down at the 31-yard line, John Clanton, the nose man. Yeah, but it was Chris Kelsey that got in there first again, coming around the corner and really flashed. Kimball out of the pocket. You see him come right around the end right here, forces Kimball inside. Nebraska continues to blitz. Look at Kelsey in there. Another mistake by that offensive line for Oklahoma. Kelsey forces him wide. A sack. Fourth and long, long, long. The final minute. Winding down in Lincoln. Stoops, the defensive coach, a coordinator, Frank Solich, the offensive coach for years as an assistant, the coordinator, both have moved up to be head coaches. win of Solich's career. Nebraska will stay number one in the BCS. But Oklahoma will circle December 1st and they will say we'll meet you in Dallas. And now Stoops will go over to shake hands with his counterpart on the other side. Here comes Solich. Two great football teams slugged it out. Great respect. There's Eric Crouch. Caught the 63 yard touchdown pass. Let's go to Jack Aru, Jack. Coach, congratulations. Obviously, the biggest win of your career. Describe how you feel. Uh, I'm really, uh, really proud of our, our players, the way they've played, and, and uh, they've been great all year long to work with. A great chemistry on this football team, and they just did the things they had to to win. I thought it was two great teams out there today. Uh, both teams, to a degree, struggled offensively at times because of the other team's great defense. Tell and me about the thought process in calling the trick play there where you make Crouch yeah. a receiver. Well, we had uh, we were looking for a time to do it all game long. They, uh, we had done an awful lot of things out of that formation, and they started to bring, uh, they started off with a guy deep, but as the game went on, they kept bringing him up tighter and tighter to stop some of the running game out of it, and it looked like it was uh, a, we had a chance on that call at that time. The possibility exists that you may have to meet this team yet again in the championship for the Big 12. Well, uh, we play Kansas next week. We're looking forward to that game, and uh, it, it, it's, it's always been a tough game for us down there, and uh, so we're going to take them one at a time and see how this thing ends up. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, Jack. 
And don't forget there's a big one against Colorado in Boulder. Oh, you bet. Over Thanksgiving Day weekend, Gary Danielson. I don't think Oklahoma will drop that far. I would rate them very highly playing this game. All right, 20 to 10. Nebraska wins it. Let's go to the John Saunders, John.